personal finance expert and Vest founder, Leslie Ann Scorgi, joining us on Canada Now. Leslie Ann, your article in The Star this week discusses how to split the bills when going on a trip with friends. I think my very best and very worst vacations of all time have been with groups of friends. And it has to do with the way the bills get split and the way that we all want to spend our time. And these trips, I get it. Everyone wants to have them right now. We are emerging from the pandemic. All the restrictions, well, not all of them, but the vast majority of restrictions across the country have been lifted. And I get it. Like we all want to be sipping mojitos with our pals on a beach somewhere. But let's face it, if there's no boundaries in place around the money and around the time spent, it could just be the most miserable holiday (laughs) that you've had in years. Yeah, and living in uncertain economic times as well. So you tell us in the piece, account for everything that you can think of and determine who's paying for what. That's right. So getting clear, it is about boundaries. Like, are you splitting the cost of the Verbo or Airbnb? Are you having one person pay for the majority of it? Maybe because they are taking the master suite and they have a family of four and and you're only a party of two. All of this needs to be accounted for. Now we'll talk about like food. So let's let's also look at the reality that uh, shared accommodation is a big deal right now. Airbnbs, you know, from a side hustle standpoint, you're seeing like, uh, I know neighbors on my street are like setting up Airbnbs. Um, and, and you're, so most people are traveling in this fashion. So it does mean that you'll want to get super clear on like, what are the taxes? What are the fees? Who's paying for what? Now, the other thing is, how does the person who's paying for that Airbnb, because it can only really be one person that like puts their credit card down, how do they want to be compensated? So are you paying them with a prompt e-transfer or a gift card? Uh, You know, I have an opinion on it, which is the best practice is if someone has put their credit card down, you should be sending over your e-transfer money like 24 hours later, tops like don't let yeah. don't leave your friends hanging oh yeah and it's awkward you know if you know you have to pay someone or if someone knows you're supposed to pay them it's awkward there's this elephant in the room just yes. get it done because the whole point of enjoying a vacation is to enjoy it and to relax to not think about these other things so get those out of the way if you have to pay someone do it quickly Absolutely. So like one thing I find that is helpful in neutralizing the awkwardness is using a spreadsheet, like a shareable sheet, like Google Sheets or whatever tool you use turn around in Dropbox, it doesn't matter. But if you're all collaborating on that same document, then it's like these costs can't be refuted. And we all know what they're going to, what it's all going to tally up to. It's predefined so that you can get there and just enjoy. No surprises. Yeah, it's all right there uh, on on paper, uh, as it were. Yes. I was doing air quotes there for those that are listening on the radio. Now, if you <laughs> if you have a, a friend and, you know, when you, when you get a group together, you know, five, six people, let's say, there might be one that is either a really big spender a really a free spender or one that doesn't want to spend any money at all yeah you, you, you might want to think twice about who you're traveling with so i i think it's like the big spender and cheapskates that you want to avoid personally uh they they don't make me feel comfortable so you know the the cheapskates or the people who don't want to spend however the terminology you want to use for those lovely people who like you all book a group dinner and they show up and they drink water and steal fries and chicken wings off of everybody else's plate Uh and don't pay like you may not want to travel with those folks and like probably their finances are not in super shape, which is why they're doing this. That's fine. 
but it could like ruin the vibe of those group dinners and what you're hoping to accomplish. Now on the same, like same coin, different side, we have those who are the big spenders. And I wrote in my article, uh, an example of this is the person who, who like orders a champagne tower at the most expensive restaurant and it's $450. And then they look at you when the bill comes, like, are you, you're going to pay half of this. Right. And like, this has actually happened to me before. And like, I'm never going to order yes. a champagne tower, right? right? That's a bad financial decision. Um, <laughs> and, and also like, who needs a tower, like a $450 tower when you can buy a bottle of Prosecco for like $24? Yeah. Right? So those folks are equally problematic when it comes to social spending. They put pressure on you that you don't want or need. Here's my point around that. Who Mm -hmm. you travel with and like the vibe that you want with this group is key. You know your friends don't bury your head in the sand. Just be clear about the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing, the thing for me with champagne towers is Leslie Ann, I'm just tired of them because yeah, they're in, they're in every room <laughs> in my house. So it's like, I'm just done with them. You know And I'm on vacation. I don't need another champagne tower. There you so go. That's, that's my thing with champagne towers. But you know, I was thinking about a friend of mine who recently went to Miami and I think it was more like, a, like a like a business trip. Like she was going along. She uh, she was hosting a couple of events, but the company that she was keeping that was going on this trip uh, had different bank accounts than her. Let's let's yes. put it that way. So they were going and ordering this and ordering that, and everybody. It was just understood that everybody was going to chip in, yeah. and she was like, "I can't keep up with this." So she was so. She said, you know what? I'll spring for the first one. And the bill came to like $900 and yes. it was drinks. So yeah. she, she paid for that. And then for the rest of the trip, she ducked out of every outdoor, like, Hey, we're going out to do this. We're going to, yeah, you go ahead. I got some other things to do. Nah, I got to work on this. I got to work. So she just spent the rest of the trip basically in her hotel just, and, and, you know, doing stuff on her own instead of going out on these group outings, because there's like, She's like, if if it, a nine hundred dollar bill for drinks on the first yeah. night, I hate to see what the rest of it's going to look like. And it's so unfortunate because it ruined her trip. It did. It did. Yeah. 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 And there's no need. I think all, all I can say is like consciousness around who you are traveling with is yeah. possibly like the most important decision in in all of totally factors yeah totally i mean in her case she didn't have uh, that decision to make it was made for her but nevertheless yeah. it ruined her trip so yeah. what kind of trip is it you talk about this in the article like how are you spending your time what kind of vacation is this going to be is it going to be like one that's like hey we got to go here we got to go here we got to check this out we got to do this or is it going to be like we're laying on the beach we're doing nothing figure that out before you go Totally. And I think, you know, one of it's one of my pet peeves is to have like an over programmed vacation where every minute of the day has an activity assigned to it, especially if there's a cost to that activity. Mm. It's just key that you and your party are clear. Now, I like the idea of variety. So if you're with a group, it's going to be really helpful for people who maybe are on a tighter budget. If they want to do the hike that costs no money versus the shopping, this is great. You know, people can go in different directions. There's plenty, by the way, to do without spending a dime. And I'm thinking of like cycling and um, hiking. I I know one of my favorite things uh, pre-pandemic and pre-children was I used to run through every city that I visited. I'd throw my and I'd find the the most popular running trail and that's how I would sightsee now I have two kids and uh you just can't bring the giant running stroller on the airplane anymore it's just way too big so I think the the days of that might be past for now yeah it's it's just 
like there's so much to do that is free or even discounted. And I think of New York, for example, there's the 50% off same day ticket booth for yes. Broadway shows yep. right in Times Square. Why not just show up and see what's there uh, versus yep. the pre-planning where it can be two or three times the amount uh, to book in advance. Yeah, and that's a great tip. I stayed at a hotel right next to it. So every yes. morning, you would just go out and say, where are we going today? What, what are we saying? Because I didn't care. So I was yes. like, you know, we're here for a few days. So what are we going to see? Uh, you, you brought this up in the piece as well. And I'm glad you did. Day-to-day -day obligations. Like you might be sharing a space where you have like, a, like a, a kitchenette or something. So you might be doing a little bit of cooking. You might be doing some, you know, cleaning dishes. Maybe yeah. you have some laundry to do determine what those obligations are and who's doing what uh, yeah like who's doing those dishes especially if you've got a chef on your hands wowie wait for yes. it because if you've got a chef on your hands you are going to have the messiest kitchen ever because they <laughs> just have this way of blowing up the kitchen and yeah. then you get these beautiful meals that come out of it so who's cooking who's cleaning who's doing the laundry and if you are traveling with other families, who is doing the child minding? So if all the parents are hitting the patio outside and having a few drinks, like who's actually watching the kids? Yeah. The pool? This is really key stuff. It's, it's a great point. I'm usually the one that doesn't drink and I'm usually the one that gets in there with the kids and plays with the kids. And then as I do that, I see the parents, all of a sudden their backs are turned yes. and they've drifted off to the other side of the room, no or the way. other side of the backyard. <laughs> and I'm like, I guess I'm watching five kids. Yes. I guess that's on me. And then, you know, eventually after I played with them for a while, I get back to the group and then somebody else jumps, jumps in after they've had a nice break. And they always say, oh, Jeff, you're so good with the kids. Oh, yeah. I know what oh, they're yeah. doing. They're doing this so that they compliment me so that I get back in there either that day or I get back in there the next time we get together. Oh, I'm yeah. on to that one. Oh, so yeah. as, as a dad of two now that's exhausted all the time, when I go to these <laughs> gatherings, <laughs> I, I, I hang with the kids for a little bit, but I don't get right in there anymore because I've got a you know, level that energy, right? Because I've got to save some for when I get home. Absolutely. For when absolutely. I'm with my own kids. Yeah. It is, it, it's just like those decisions can like yeah. make or break, make or break true. the vacation. It's but, true. And then there's it, safety stuff too, right? <laughs> there, well, there is. Yeah. And I don't want to be on the hook for all of that. No. In the end, if, if all of this seems stressful or if any of this seems stressful, you might want to travel alone or, you know, travel with your partner and that's it. Yeah. I just actually, I get press releases all the time and I got one last week, which it was like after I submitted my column for print and for digital publication, it was so funny. The press release I got was the rise of the solo traveler. And I, I was like, isn't this so timely because everybody wants to group travel. And then there's people who are listening to this conversation today and they are literally, their, their heart is beating faster and they are not feeling very comfortable about a group holiday. If that is you, do not even venture it. Like yeah. there may be some obligations, maybe your brother, sister, they're getting married. You got to go and do the big bachelor party. Um, that might be the extent of, of what you want to do. Just honor who you are, honor your wallet. We are, uh, we are heading into uncertain economic times as the market is doing a lot of like yo-yo and corrections. You do not want to overdo it on this holiday and kind of like break the bank and break your friendships at the same time. No kidding. Check out me, vest.ca. Personal finance expert, me vest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie Ann Scorsby. Leslie Ann, always a pleasure, my friend. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, Jeff.